Boom shakalaka, what is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to code Bollinger Bands in Python. Now, granted, this may not be a topic that a lot of you like, but, but I have been learning Python because, you know, when I went to school, I studied physics in undergrad. We had to learn how to computer program. I learned C++ and also Fortran. And I never really liked programming back then. But you know what? I really want to be an awesome computer programmer, developer, blockchain developer, something like that in the future. Because I think computers are everywhere. And if we can learn to develop, then things are going to be awesome. So I've been messing around. Python's like one of the most badass languages because it was actually made to be easy to read because you spend most of your time reading code, so you might as well have something that's easy to read. So Python is a language that's easy to read, and I've been learning this, and uh, I was just messing around because I'm taking this course on uh, Python for financial data, something like that, and learn how to make Bollinger Bands with Python, which is freaking awesome. Maybe I'm very enthusiastic about it, but it's super cool. I thought it was awesome because check it out. This, I coded that in Python, and Guess what? It looks very, very similar to this. Identical, okay? Identical. If we take a look, I coded that, and this is exactly the same. So I'm gonna show you how to do that if you care to find out. If you don't, totally up to you. Now, a few things about this coding. So first thing is, I use Jupyter Notebooks uh, to do it just because it makes it easier, cleaner, so we can see everything there. Also, uh, the data that I got for this was from Quandl. Now, I, ju I was just introduced to Quandl. I didn't know about this at all. It's Quandl.com. But they have so much crazy data and they have a ton of data about cryptocurrencies. Now, now I should say, a lot of the things are premium. Like if you see here, it says premium. You can see cryptocurrency ratios and sentiment, cryptocurrency ratings, a whole bunch of stuff like that. But they have other stuff. You can just go and explore. And here's a whole bunch of stuff relating to Bitcoin. So they have Bitcoin Watch, which has the mining statistics. They have stuff on Bitfinex. They have Bitcoin charts, exchange rate data, blockchain, Bitstamp, GDAX, a whole bunch of different stuff. So for this, what I did was I used Bitfinex and then I just got the, uh, the Bitcoin US dollar pair. So in order to do that, you just need to search here for BTC. And once it loads, then uh, basically it'll just give a little code like Bitfinex BTC USD, and that's how you get the data. So I'm going to show you all about how to do that. And like I mentioned before, I have been doing an online course on Udemy. I think it's awesome, pretty badass. Python for financial analysis and al algorithmic trading. Um, right now, I don't know why Udemy changes the price all the time. They're kind of like an airline, but uh, it's like a $10 course. So obviously don't pay the $194, pay the $10 for it. Uh, now. How do we do it? Okay, I'm glad you asked. So first things first, I was gonna type this as I went along, but I'm just not that good yet where I could type and say stuff first. So I just program it all, we'll talk about it, and then you can kind of learn from there. So first thing is you need to import your libraries into Python. So you import NumPy as NP, import pandas, import matplotlib, and also because it's using a, a Jupyter Notebook, you need to do this matplotlib, matplotlib inline. So then, once we import all the libraries, then we need to import the data from Quandl. So we're gonna import Quandl, okay? And then we're gonna grab that data from Quandl. So as you can see here, uh, just made a variable BTC equals Quandl.get. And then this is the code that you needed for the BTC USD on Bitfinex. So it's Bitfinex slash BTC USD. And then uh, oftentimes you'll need an API key. Now you can get an API key by just going to Quandl, you register for an account and then you get you register for free you get an API key so you can basically download all this stuff for free except for the premium stuff but uh, I'm using that obviously I'm going to change the IP API key after making this video but uh, in order to get that data I need to put the API key in there so if you're going to do something similar you need to throw an API key in there just like that so then just let's take a look at the data so if we take a look at the data if we take a look at the first five lines of data how it comes is we have a date so it goes all the way back to 2014. So we have August 15th or April 15th of 2014. We have the daily high, the low, the mid. We have the last, which is the close price, bid, ask, and volume for every day, which is pretty crazy. I mean, back then, Bitcoin was $500. Hmm, a little bit higher now. But if we take a look, we can just plot that out so you can see that this data is exactly what we're doing. So I would just uh, call the BTC 
and then taking a look just at the last line because that's like the closes. So taking a look at the close and uh, dot tail 700, which is the last 700 closes. We plot that and I just made it a bigger plot so it'll show on this whole screen. Take a look, that looks very familiar, doesn't it? Looks pretty damn familiar. That blue line there, that's the Bitcoin price. Same thing that we get when we plot the closes. Now, creating Bollinger Bands. Turns out Bollinger Bands are pretty simple. Um, basically what it is, it's a 20 day moving average and then we have two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below. So in order to code that, basically all I need to do was create this uh, 20 day MA, okay? And all that is is the, the close, so the close of that. And then we use this rolling function that calculates the average, so that's like a moving average. And then we just mean them. And what we get with that is a 20 day moving average. And then we create the upper Bollinger Band, which is plus two standard deviations. And we create a lower, which is minus two standard deviations. So we just take that 20 day moving average, we add two standard deviations. So two of those, uh, the, two of the closes, the rolling, add standard deviation, and then lower, we just do the opposite. We copy this whole entire thing, change the variable name to lower, and then we uh, subtract it. That's it, simple as that, okay? So we just created a 20 day moving average, the upper and lower, and then we just plot them. So basically we call a Bitcoin function and uh, we plot last, the 20 day moving average, the upper, the lower. And I just did the tail because this is like five years of data. It's, you can't see the Bollinger Bands as nicely when you plot the whole data. So I just did the last two years of data because you all would recognize this giant peak and then the crash to 6,000 and then the crash to 3,000 and then the back up to 15,000 and then down to where we are right now. And plot that. And this is what you get. Pretty crazy. Very fun. Very simple. And as you can see here, even in the legend, we have this... Uh, the blue line is the close, the, uh, the orange line is the 20 day moving average, and then we have the upper and the lower. And if we take a look, that's exactly what it looks like on TradingView, if you change around some variable stuff so that it looks like that. But that is freaking crazy. Blew my mind that you could code this stuff with Python, because I, I never really was that great of a computer programmer. Even though, even though I got hired by NASA uh, to work on land imaging satellites as a computer programmer, Still wasn't that great of a programmer, but this stuff blows my mind how you can do this stuff. And I just thought, like, I've been messing around with Bollinger Bands on here forever, and now I can just code them myself. And plus with Quandle, there's a whole bunch more fun, free data that you can go take a look at. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of stuff. Make sure when you do take a look at them that you tick free, because you can take a look at all this free stuff and find out all about it. You can find out stuff from local Bitcoins. Crazy, all the stuff. you. Can. And then if you want, you can check out the premium stuff. I don't know how much it costs. But if you are interested in learning any computer programming language, I would highly recommend Udemy. These courses are legit. They're definitely not this expensive. Uh, on, I mean, they have a sale like every other day, usually around $10 for most of the courses. Sometimes they have giant sales where they're like 2 to $5. So definitely Black Friday, they'll be having a sale for that. So that's it. I just, I did this and I was like, I got to share this with you guys. I know a lot of you probably won't be interested but for those of you who want to get into coding, guess what? It's not that hard to learn coding. Anyone can do it. And you can make a lot of money doing it. And you can do it anywhere in the world. And it's the future. Okay, computers have only been around for like so many years. And there's a whole bunch of future. And it's an ever-growing field. So if you want to make a buttload of money, learn how to program. So that's it for the episode today. I hope you enjoyed that. I totally enjoyed that. That made my day. And... Uh, other than that, make sure you check out the Monarch Wallet. Hold Bitcoin and 3,000 other cryptocurrencies in there. Uh, earn up to 10% interest on your cryptos. And you can swap cryptos on there. You can do all types of fun stuff. And also, they have Monarch Pay, the world's first decentralized recurring crypto payments. Only people doing that. So, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Peace.